On the first night, I dreamt of seven fat cows that came out of the Nile and began to graze on the bank. Then the Nile went dry. Then seven starving cows came out of the dried Nile. They attacked the fat cows on the bank and swallowed them whole. On the second night, in addition to the dream of the cows, I dreamt of seven ears of green wheat that were overcome and dried by seven ears of withered wheat. Eminence Akmahu and the priests have already heard the details of my dream. They have had until today to interpret it. Now I await its interpretation. We're listening. We have made many efforts. We examined stars and constellations. We sought help from the spirits of our ancestors. We sought help from the devils and demons so that we could interpret your dream. But... There is no dream we cannot interpret. But the Pharaoh's dream is different from any other dream. It is like an unanswerable puzzle or like an impenetrable fortress. It negated all our incantations and sorcery. Our efforts have resulted in one conclusion. Based on Egyptian mythology, the cow represents one year. That is all. A year. <laughs> A year. A year. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain gave birth to a mouse and the great Nile, a mosquito. <laughs> Is that the interpretation? 
cow means year. All right, you Sarsif, if you will, you interpret for us. I will not interpret, but I will explain the inner meaning of your dream. What is the difference between interpreting and explaining? An interpretation is based on guesswork and assumptions. But an explanation is revealing the divine truth of the dream. And what I say will happen without a doubt, and it may not be changed or prevented. From whence comes so much certainty, you Zarsif? How are you so confident? It comes from my God. He gives me the knowledge. He teaches me. What you say is nothing but a claim. And one which is far from being proven. Both yourself and your God are shrouded in ambiguity and doubt. If your eminence will allow it, I will remove the Shroud of Doubt and prove the truth of the dream and my God. If Eminence Ankmahu agrees, we will interpret the dream together. Your dream interpreters have said that cows represent one year in Egyptian mythology. Is that right? Yes. I've no doubt at this point. And do you agree the dreams of the cows and the wheat are alike? They appear so, yes. And are the green fruitful ones not a sign of a good harvest, and the weak yellow ones a sign of famine? I don't recall any other interpretation. Then, it seems, can we not conclude that there will be seven years of plentiful crops and seven years of drought and famine in Egypt. Well done. Well done, Yuzarsif. That is the most accurate interpretation. It is accurate. I must say, I admire the young Yuzarsif. <laughs> Do you see, Eminence Ankmahu? Do you recall I told you they were a bunch of incapable lackeys? Able only to make hopeful guesses. Useful to nobody, not even themselves. The interpretation seems correct. But one must be wary of an interpretation that is not in accord with reality. Have you ever heard of a time when the Holy Nile ceased to provide Egypt with water? This interpretation suits the black land in the south of Egypt. But not a land that has the gem of the Nile on its ring. We have heard from our ancestors that in the past, the Nile became so shallow that it was unable even to provide water for the birds. Even if Yusuf Sif's interpretation of the dream is not accurate, it would be a wise thing to take precautionary measures just in case. According to this interpretation, a great danger looms over the future of Egypt. What is the solution? The solution is to sow and store in the seven years of prosperity, so as to feed the people during the seven years of famine. <laughs> well done. 
Well done to the wise Yuzar Sif. The solution is as flawless as the interpretation. Are you really prepared to risk 14 years of this country's life on a dream? Do you have a better solution? Let us assume danger is imminent. Should we not try to prevent a possible danger? Indeed. But one must remember that 14 years of a nation's well-being is a great deal to gamble on an interpretation. Not to mention spending the country's entire capital on an imaginary danger. I agree that it is wise to be cautious. And what if it happens? What will we do if there is a famine? And we are not prepared. It is a great blessing that we know our future. Now that we know what will happen, we can survive this big danger. We should be grateful to you, Sasif. He warned us of the danger. We are grateful to Yuzar Sif's god as well. Because he supports the followers of other gods as well. You have all heard about the chastity and purity of Yuzar Sif. Today, you witnessed his sagacity and prudence. And knowledge and intelligence. You witnessed he is superior to all other Egyptian dream interpreters. As of today, I appoint him my trustee. Yuzar Sif will have an absolute and unconditional position with us. Today I am joyous. I don't want to lessen my joy by punishing you dream interpreters. Today, the weakness and inability of the Egyptian gods and Amon's priests and dream interpreters was revealed. You witnessed the god superior to Amon. Take these dream interpreters away before I change my mind. Stupid old fool. Still you don't know when to open your mouth and when to shut it. You benefit from Amon, but support Amon's foe. His interpretation was accurate. I couldn't be unfair. You fool! You should have shut up! In front of everyone else! Why did you support that enemy? Traitor! 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 You! Traitor! Eminence and Mahu! Hey! Whoa, stop! 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 Yes, Eminence. Take him away. Yes, Eminence. Forgive me. I'm not a traitor. Forgive me. Have mercy, Your Eminence. Have mercy. Such a scandal has never before happened to Arman and his servants. The news of this defeat will undoubtedly spread all over Egypt soon. They will say that the one god of the Hebrew Yusasif, the god of a savage shepherd, defeated the great god Amon. The savage shepherd. They will say the young and inexperienced Yusasif defeated the old dream interpreters of Egypt in interpreting a dream. Do not forget that the people of Egypt worship the dream interpreters like goddesses. May the great Amon have mercy on us. How hard we must try to make up for this scandal.
Excuse me. Do you work in the palace? What do you want? Joseph. I mean, Yuzar Seif. Do you know him? Why do you want to see him? Is he in the palace now? I suppose he is. I am his friend. You? A friend of Yuzar Seif? Malak, son of Tsar. Please tell him Malak has been looking for him for 20 years. Based on Excellency Yusar Sif's interpretation of my dream, we are to face a big famine. We must find a solution for this crisis. Affairs must be managed by someone trustworthy and honest, efficient and competent. You, the aristocrats and noblemen of Egypt, do you know such a person? Your Highness, Potiphar, Potiphar should manage this crisis. Potiphar is unwell. He cannot shoulder such a big responsibility as this. Your Highness, the commander of the palace guards. Why not Paramahab? He is suitable. Paramahab is very capable. However, he is more suited to commanding the troops, rather than agricultural affairs. Oh, Joseph. This heavy responsibility is on your shoulders. Accept it. It is God's will to establish your authority in Egypt. Your Highness, allow me to take the responsibility. Appoint me in charge of the treasury and agricultural affairs. Because I can keep people's assets and grains. And devise measures to run the country's affairs. Right. Who can be better than you? I am certain you can do this task too. As of today, you are the head of the treasury and the agricultural affairs of Egypt. I now announce that Excellency Yusar Sif is of now the high advisor to the pharaoh of Egypt. Although he is a wise youth, he is a foreigner. Do you think he can handle such a heavy responsibility? I don't know. What do you think? Is his god really superior to all of our gods? No. Didn't you see how Ankh-Mahu and the dream interpreters surrendered and then were defeated by him? However, the appointment of a foreigner is a shame and a disgrace to the noblemen of Egypt. You, the noblemen and dignitaries of Egypt, know what a lofty status the dream interpreters have and few reach such a position. Here is a dream interpreter the likes of which Egypt has never seen. I shall be holding a golden ceremony to honor Excellency Yusar Sif. Has Excellency Yusar Sif any request? For I would like to fulfill it. The Pharaoh has been very kind to me today. I request His Highness complete His kindness. 
I accept any request from you, Zarsif. I have two requests. The first being, please release the women prisoners. And second, release the prisoners of Zavira. I personally guarantee their good conduct. We imprisoned those women because of you. They will be released if you wish it. But you seem to have forgotten that Zuleika was the one that had you imprisoned. That's right, Your Highness. I assure you, I tried to forget. You spent many years in prison because of Zuleika. She is disloyal and capricious, and must be punished. I wasn't created for revenge. The one who has brought everybody the gift of blessing cannot be spiteful or revengeful. We thought you would take severe revenge on Potiphar and Zuleika. I only sought to be exonerated. I don't want them imprisoned or punished. Moreover, I request the freedom of the innocent prisoners. It is not right to release Zavira prisoners. They are dangerous. They were dissidents against Amman and Egypt's government. Those prisoners, they are all charged with treason. I lived with them for many years. I guarantee their good behavior and conduct. They are not the same old prisoners. It is your decision. As of today, you can issue orders. You can order the officers to do anything you wish. Order their release. Thank you, Your Highness. Greetings, Commander Taklot. I have a letter from Commander Harmhob. Who is it for? It's for Excellency Kidderman. May Mon protect you. I'll take it now. advisor to the Pharaoh of Egypt, to Kidderman, warden of Zavira prison. As we are aware of the good behavior and conduct of Zavira prisoners, and we know many of the prisoners were wrongfully imprisoned. We deem it necessary to pardon the rest of their sentences and thus order you to release all prisoners. The advisor to the Pharaoh of Egypt. You shall see.
Zavira is unbearable without you, Zasif. I wish that I was freed with them. Freed to join you, Zasif. Yes, I think you're right. Yes. By the order of the High Advisor to the Pharaoh, Excellency Yusersif, you are free. What did you say? Is Yusersif the High Advisor to the Pharaoh? Yes, that is right. Did you hear? Yusersif is the High Advisor to the Pharaoh Amenhotep. Do you know what that means? It means the Pharaoh, too, is fascinated by him. Is it possible to be beside Yusar Sif, but not in his trap? It is only the beginning. From now on, you will see many of his admirers. So we must walk. They said the priests were weak and unable before him, and that whatever he interprets will happen. He says he's learned dream interpreting from his god, that it is not his knowledge. Right. He talked about his god all the time. Maybe because he wanted to say his god is more powerful than Amon. Yes, that is right. He said there would be seven years of prosperity and rain, and seven years of drought and famine. It seems we must think about the future. How do you know there will be famine? Because they say Yuzar Sif interprets dreams accurately. Besides, a wise man takes warnings very seriously. If Yuzar Sif has interpreted this dream, it will undoubtedly happen. He is right. If there is famine and we have stock, we can use it. If there isn't famine, we won't lose anything. Where are you, Joseph? They talk about you everywhere. Then why does Malik not find you?
You wanted to see me? I haven't wanted to see you for a long time. But because of what happened in Amenhotep's palace today, I think it is necessary to remind you and the palace residents of some points. If you would scour your brains, you may remember that we jailed Yuzasif about ten years ago. To belittle and humiliate him in public. His crime being that he did not submit to Zaleka and the women of Thebes. However, contrary to our plan, you can see that Zaleka and myself have become belittled and humiliated and Yuzar Sif has acquired a lofty position that we could never have imagined. Zoleika and I were disgraced before the Pharaoh yesterday. She, because of her whims and disloyalty to her husband, and her cruelty to the innocent, and I, for allowing him to be jailed and participating in Zuleika's disloyalty. It must be a lesson for all of you. Allow me to say what I have kept as a secret for more than 10 years. Zuleika, because of following her caprice, disgraced her husband and family and defamed all of us. Curse on me for obeying her and imprisoning an innocent youth and a knowledgeable sage like you, Zarsif. I confess my sin. I am responsible. But your admiration and laudation for you, Zarsif, indicates to me that I did not fall for lowly man. You don't understand the obscenity of what you say. The interpretation of what you say is that women are entitled to betray their husbands if they find someone better, and to sacrifice everything to reach their desire. May curse be upon capricious women like Soleika, and men like me who leave unanswered the sin of women like Soleika. Expect nothing else from you, Zarsif. The disloyal women of Egypt were released by him as well. Only you, Zarsif, would be so forgiving. He will now free you as well. Me? Me? He will free me? Yes. You, Zarsif's love will free you. As 
of now. You are free and may leave. Can Zuleika not behave like you, Zarsif? Forgive and free like him. I'm free. Uh, thank you, my lady. Thank you, Lady Zaleka! Give me a hand. Who do you think it could be? Oh! Whose body is it? Grab his feet! Yeah, it's too slippery. Oh! That's the High Dream Interpreter from Amon's Temple. at your disposal if you need any further services. Guard, where is Excellency Padiamon? Excellency Padiamon, the High Dream Interpreter. He's dead. We found his body in the water. We have him on the pier. Go with this seaman to see what the matter is. It seems the High Dream Interpreter's body has been found in the water. If it is his body, bring it here. Yes, sir. You fool! You can't even do a simple job? We did. We dumped his body where the Nile is full of crocodiles. And how has he ended up on the pier? If his death is blamed on the temple, I will hold you responsible. If you fail to do what you have promised to do even one more time, there'll be no coins for you. I did my job well, so I don't know what has happened. Go. Go and hide someplace. Before anybody sees you here now, go, I said. Be Nineveh Kepta, am I right? How's your friend, Yuzarsif? He's fine. Why do you ask? I have a lot to settle with him. I'd like to see him very much. He couldn't bear the shame of defeat by Yusasif, and he drowned himself. What a terrible, 
terrible tragedy and loss. It was very hard for a high dream interpreter. Not to be able to interpret the dream of the Pharaoh. So he committed suicide. Take him to the West without most respect. Mummify him. And bury him in one of the vaults. Are you sure he was killed? Definitely. Yesterday, I witnessed him being arrested by Petty Amon, and today he is dead. I saw Nineveh Kepta laughing at his corpse. I'm sure it's his doing. You didn't see the High Dream Interpreter begging Ankh-Mahu to forgive him. They have no mercy even on themselves to get what they're after. Ankh-Mahu and the Temple Priests are capable of any crime. They must be punished. They cannot continue committing such crimes. Ankhmahu has set his own rules in the temple. The government of Egypt does not interfere. If God helps us, we will eradicate this recalcitrance. I am worried about you, Excellency Yusarsif. Take care of yourself. I put myself under God's protection. None of them will be able to harm me in Eros. Reveal this crime everywhere, so the people know that the priests cannot hide it. And you must look for Ninefer Kepta. He is dangerous. He will commit more crimes while he is free. I forgot something, Excellency. A disheveled, non-Egyptian man was asking about you. Did he say his name? He did. I think it was Malek. Yes, it was Malek. Was it Malek, son of Tsar? Yes. Malek, son of Tsar, right. That was it. Impossible. He said he'd been looking for you for more than 20 years. I'm sure he has. You find him. Wherever he is, please find him and bring him to me. Yes, Your Excellency. Right away. Malek, son of Tsar. Malek. Is it him?